Welcome everyone. We're going to walk through what you should be doing when you first install Voxel on your WordPress website. Go over to Voxel, we're gonna click on settings and we're just going to walk you through all of these settings right here. Membership, if you're going to require them to verify their email address with a code sent to their email upon registration, you're gonna to wanna to turn that on. If you're going to have your membership site, you can check here and see what you want to do for prorations and invoices. Proration just basically means that they're going to be partially paying depending on when they're signing up during the days of the month and when you're going to cancel the subscription. If you want to cancel it immediately or if you want to cancel it at the end of the billing period. Enable free trial is pretty explanatory. You can turn that on and have the amount of free trial days that you want. Tax collection allows you to enable taxes for people when they're checking out on your website, whether it be for the products or for registration or memberships. You have that ability to turn that on. And then you have promotional codes that you can manage inside of Stripe. You can turn that on so you can allow promo codes and coupons. Stripe, you can change your currency here. API keys, you're gonna get these from your Stripe dashboard. Make sure that you enter in your public one and your private one, and then you actually enter in your test mode, public and private as well. And then when you're done testing everything out, make sure you turn off the test mode. Once you load those points in and you save, some additional options will appear here. Those are not important to worry about, um, except for make sure that your web hook endpoints are set up. The customer portal, if you want them to be able to access their customer portal via Stripe, you could have these items here showing invoice history, uh, allow them to update their billing details, and then you can have these fields for when they're checking out as well. Under the advanced, this isn't something that you have to worry about unless you know what you're doing. For map providers, you have a couple to choose from, Google Maps and Mapbox. Both of them are gonna ask you for an API key depending on which one you choose. With Google, you have different map options. If you want to display any of these, you can have the map type of control so they can filter on the satellite terrain roadmap on the front end. Street view control, meaning they're allowed to view the street type for that address. And if you have a custom map skin, you can also paste the code there. If you want to change the language, you're able to change that here for the map. Autocomplete search forms. You can just leave all feature types so that you, way you can get all of these um, options when auto-completing. Same with the auto-complete submission, countries as well. And then if you want there to be a default location when people are entering their map address on the create form, you can enter in those latitude and longitude digits here and your zoom level. So if you're more of like a city website, you can enter in probably around uh, 12 to 15 as your number. If you're looking more worldwide or US or countrywide, then you're gonna wanna zoom out more to maybe like a four to six zoom level. Login with Google is pretty self-explanatory. Once you go through your API console, you're going to put in your client ID and your client secret. Recaptcha, I honestly don't even use this. I use a plugin called Clean Talk. It is $8 per year per website. So it's very simple and people don't have to worry about the recaptures. But if you want to, you can fill out your information here if you need to. For timeline, for statuses and reviews and things like that, this is going to be the settings for those. If you want people to allow them to edit their statuses slash reviews, the maximum length and characters, if you want them to be able to upload images, and if you do, how many images, how big in kilobytes. So basically just add three zeros to it and then that'll be your like your megabyte. So if you want a five megabyte image uh, as your max then you would type in 5,000. Allow editing for replies to comments, same thing. You can actually have a max reply depth. So if you only want one reply depth, so somebody posts a review and then you say thank you, they don't have to go through and reply to yours and say thank you to yours. So that'll be a reply depth of one. Minimum time between posts. So allowing them to restrict on how often people are posting. You have those options here. 
and the reply rate. So replying to those posts or reviews, you have those options here as well. Notifications, you're going to want to go through and click on your admin and then how often, how long you want to keep the in-app notifications up to date for. Um, I choose usually as long as I can. Um, 90 is a pretty good three months just to keep those in the database. Direct messages, if you want to restrict the amount of characters that they can put in the messages. Enable file uploads. Again, if we want to upload larger files, this will be equivalent of five megabytes. How many file count they can upload in a single message. And then you have all of your different file types here that you can uh, allow them to upload. If you want them to update the chats in real time, sort of like a Facebook Messenger kind of thing. And if you want them to have like red message receipts, you have that option here. And how uh, long do you want to store those messages? So 365 is one year. Statistics, this is gonna be something that you're gonna come back to. Uh, I suggest after you create all of your post types because you need to enable it for each separate post type here. And then I like to keep my statistics for a long time. So 365 days for one year. Um, I like to keep it and then you can refresh your cache uh, every 24 hours is fine with that. And then you can turn on geolocation services too. I typically use GeoJS. Emails, this is going to be required so that your site can help send out emails. If you're on a, a platform like GoDaddy cPanel or something along those lines, you won't have to install a third-party plugin. But if you are on like something like Cloudways or a grid pane or something along those lines, you'll need to install a plugin called Fluent SMTP in order for you to send out emails appropriately. So your sender name is going to be maybe the title of your site. So this one would be Voxel Guide Shop. Your email address as the admin that people will see. And then if you want to add some footer text, you have the ability to do those with the Voxel dynamic tags. If you need to create custom locations, you can do that here on nav menus. I created a one called create menu. So that way I can assign all of the create pages to that menu. And I can pull those into the action list widget in Voxel Elements. Share menu. So you have the ability to rearrange or get rid of any of these sharing platforms. This is if you're using the share functionality inside of the action list widget, you can rearrange or delete. Database, you don't need to worry about this unless you know what you're doing. And for other, you don't need to worry about this unless you know what you're doing. If you want to enable the line awesome icon pack, you can do that. I typically turn it off and I will just use my own custom icons. So it's not loading anything third party. That's basically a rundown of all of the Voxel settings that you should get going before you start working on your website. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. Thank you.